Hello, uh, friends. Uh, I had the privilege of uh, witnessing the vows of a number of um, marriages uh, this past summer. And uh, one of the couples chose uh, Mark uh, 10 verses uh, 6 through 9, and I'd like to share that with you. Jesus said, uh, From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In this brief passage, I think that Jesus uh, teaches us some rather fundamental realities about marriage. And he teaches us pretty simply and clearly that that God very intentionally and decidedly made us male and female, that he made us for marriage and family, that he brings about uh, by his purpose and his grace a unity in marriage that is uh, strong and possible in him, and that God's intention is that marriage be permanent. Now these truths about uh, the reality and a meaning of marriage are under a lot of fire in our culture today. And yet I think that this passage, coupled with others in the Old Testament and the New Testament, are, are clear and consistent, and that marriage has its origin in God, and that he has a de definitive plan uh, for this great adventure of marriage. We all know that there are a wide range of factors that are pulling hard at the fabric of marriage in our world today. Uh, the lack of solid family life in a lot of homes that nurtures the values and commitments that are critical for uh, living out a, a, a loving and a, a lifelong marriage. I think the regular viewing of pornography, which is a kind of a cancer for so many today, uh, that greatly wounds and distorts our perspective on human sexuality and our capacity to love tenderly and, and sacrificially and uh, completely uh, the other. I think the lack of commitment on the part of adults in our world today to encourage and foster the development of virtue in general, which is so critical to uh, preparing young people for that sacrificial love that is required in marriage. I think that young people experience many failed marriages in the world today, and so I think that some of them have almost lost hope that, that marriage is, is possible. And certainly most of the mainstream media does not support those values uh, that encourage marriage and, and actually are, are fairly destructive of marriage. Um, and so I could go on, but I think that's enough for now. But And so I, I think that this truth that God's plan for marriage is what leads to human flourishing um, it needs to be encouraged in our world today. And a, a stable marriage between a man and a woman is the best environment for raising children. Uh, this plan uh, lays a solid foundation for a healthy society and a healthy church. That mature God-centered marriages uh, are actually what lead to lasting happiness for human beings. And that uh, God does the joining here and promises grace uh, to live this critical vocation uh, in our world. And so we find ourselves as Christians today, I think, having to walk a little bit of a tightrope uh, in our culture and in our world. Uh, we need to balance um, understanding and compassion towards our broken world and those who are suffering in so many ways in this broken world with our need to teach and to foster this, this biblical understanding of marriage. And so that is, I think, Christians need to demonstrate um, great pastoral care and respect and understanding for those spouses in marriages that have ended, for those Christians who um, are, are, are really struggling with embracing these values, uh, with those uh, men and women of goodwill who have been wounded by our, our broken world and, and by um, uh, the, the, the difficulties that uh, come about with uh, broken families. 
And uh, we need to reach out with great care for those who uh, have chosen to live alternative lifestyles. And at the same time, again, I think that we are invited by the Lord um, uh, it, it very strongly to, to have the courage to stand up for God's plan for marriage and the belief that that is what leads to our greatest human flourishing. And so, uh, my brothers and sisters, I uh, want to leave you with a, uh, a loving challenge today. Um, will you help the church uh, proclaim uh, the good news about marriage and sexuality to our world today? Thank you, and uh, God bless you.